Under my view, it is never a business judgment to confer monopoly power on those people with whom you trade, which means that you cannot have states authorizing public unions. But that doesn't mean that a state can't run an affirmative action program if it thinks that some kind of racial integration is going to do better than some other pattern. And when the Supreme Court basically doesn't distinguish between those two kinds of cases, it gets itself into trouble. And that, I think, is a burden that the conservatives have to face on this particular case. When government regulate, at that particular point, they don't have the kinds of discretion that they have when they're running their own business. They have to explain why the regulation is designed to prevent some kind of abuse by the firm that's subject to the regulation or is part of a comprehensive scheme that gives them return benefits that they couldn't obtain in a voluntary market. So the basic theory of the firm, the basic theory of competition, is the basic theory that informs the meaning of liberty and property. And since these are constitutional constants, essentially, if you understand the underlying theory, it will give you shape to the constitutional discourse. And when people say, it's, gee, it's too hard to understand, what they're really telling you is, we understand what the theory is. We don't like this particular theory, so we're going to ignore it. And what you then do is you get them oscillating in crazy situations. Oftentimes today, you have the Supreme Court, which denies legislatures the power to stop aggression and fraud. The recent cases involving abortion picketers, the Supreme Court, not what I thought was a bizarre decision, says keeping people 35 feet away from the entry place into a, an abortion clinic, um, that this is an impermissible restriction on freedom of speech. It's an effort to maintain public order, and you've got to give them some discretion in it. On the other hand, when they start talking about, you know, the whole Obamacare-type situation, they give enormous discretion on the way in which you shift funds back and forth across individuals. What they're doing is they're getting it wrong in the opposite direction. So it's kind of a sad commentary uh, that what we do is we uh, basically deny states' uh, discretion where they ought to have it, and we confer upon them political power where they ought not. And if you get everything upside down, sooner or later it's going to be rather costly to the overall operation of the system.